Greetings to you all and welcome to another episode of Damole News. All right, my people. So Tinibu has come out to say that when he took over as the president of Nigeria, that the country was bleeding. But right now, he has been able to stop the bleeding. And also on this episode, the Labour Party vice presidential candidate Dati Ahmed has responded to Wale Shoinka criticism of him, Peter Obi and the obedience. All right, I'm going to be giving you guys the full details of this news, but please help us to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like and share this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you. So, Bola Ahmed Tinibu has stated that the nation was bleeding when he took over power in 2023, adding that his administration has been able to stop the bleeding. So, speaking when he received a delegation of the Yoruba leaders of thought at the State House on Friday, Tinibu emphasized that governors must be transformative and must address the critical needs of citizens. He said the past 12 months have been fulfilling for his administration despite the presence of some challenges that are being addressed frontally. According to his words, he said, It has been challenging. It has been fulfilling as well. We took over and we have stopped the bleeding. I can say categorically that Nigeria is no longer bleeding and it will not bleed to death but rather we move to prosperity. That is the promise that I made to you all and it is also the charge that you gave to me. We are managing to swim through the pond. The current is not a good one. We will turn the tide. We are turning the bend. This I assure you. I am being very careful. The worst is over for Nigeria. We will prevail. I thank the team who have been working really hard. All I can promise is that we will do whatever it takes. We are determined and we will work so that all Nigerians can feel the impact of good governance. So, he continued by assuring Nigerians that his administration will ensure they get value for every Kobo spent and that his government will leave a lasting legacy of prosperity to future generations while removing the yoke of poor governors and expanding access to qualitative public goods. Tinibu also called for the deepening of governance and the reinforcement of leadership across all levels of government and institutions. He added that his administration is committed to encouraging fiscal federalism and strengthening the system to enhance inclusion and equity for all Nigerians. Meanwhile, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, the 2023 Labour Party vice presidential candidate, has responded to Wale Shoinka criticism of Peter Obi presidential bid. Baba Ahmed suggested that Shoinka is frightened by the prospect of Obi bringing positive change to Nigeria and is attempting to distract from the failures of the current administration. So, while speaking in an interview with Arise TV primetime program, Baba Ahmed addressed the ongoing political discourse, highlighting Shoinka's critical remarks about Peter Obi. Baba Ahmed argued that showing her comments are not based on genuine concerns, but are a strategic move to discredit Obi potential contributions to Nigeria's progress. So, according to Baba Ahmed, showing her fears are rooted in the possibility that Obi's success will starkly contrast with the inadequacy of the administration, backed by showing her thereby exposing its shortcomings. Baba Ahmed emphasized that showing her criticism are intended to create doubt about Peter Obi capabilities and to distract the public from the real issues plaguing the country. He suggested that Shoinka is using his influence to shift the narrative away from the pressing problems that the current government has failed to address. Baba Ahmed expressed his commitment to focusing on solutions and positive change rather than getting entangled in personal disputes with high-profile critics. Alright, I'm going to let you guys listen to the interview and I'll be right back to conclude. The learned elder statesman Professor Wally Shoinka he is scared in advance about what Peter will be, what good Peter will be will bring to Nigeria. He is scared in advance that uh, the end is still looking very likely uh, for his principle, for bad governance. And uh, what Shoinka is doing now is an attempted distraction, which I beg you to excuse me from joining issues with Wale Shoinka, please. Uh, you and I have much, much better things to do. For all I know, he could continue to throw punches at my principal, at me, as small as I am. He could continue to do that. All I can do, I will grieve in my heart, I will pray for him. You see, intellects 
does not give you right, uh, the right to insult anybody. I remember this Shoinka insulting late General Abacha, insulting him to the core that he was daft, he was that. It, nothing gives him the right to do that. He had no rights. Abacha was not an academic. He was a soldier, for God's sake, and a good one for that matter in his own way, in his own right. Uh, I beg you, let us please put Shoinka and his likes aside. We have better things to talk about. We, we'll have enough time to talk about a lot of things, and, mm -hmm. and I do respect your your wishes there, but I have to ask you whether you think he has a point when he says that by not controlling or at least trying to control the online trolls responsible for the insults directed at him, Mr. B, and by extension yourself, are tacitly encouraging such behavior. As a partial academic, let me tell you that Nobel laureates all over the world are loved and cherished by their people, not just their nationals, globally. I have never heard where Nobel laureates are insulted in the manner that uh, Wole Shoenka is. You're making me to speak about him, I don't want to. Um, now, go back. Nigerians contested through Peter Obi and me. We said this many, many times. It was a force that came alive, a genuine one, a powerful one, that won election and was taken away. Never mind what uh, Anik declared. There is no way Peter Obi, with all the issues in front of him, and my humble self, can control obedience as they were. Oh, Peter Obi entered a canoe without a life jacket, and he paid for it. So it is not the work of Peter Obi to control the obedience. It is the responsibility of Wole Shoinka to maintain his respect and dignity. I could say a few things to Wole Shoinka that will destroy him for good. I am never scared. Um, if only you were play, playing by the rules and you were clean and you were winning your elections, I could be scared of you. If you were legit, I would be scared of you. I would respect you actually if you were legit. You see, your own, your own Tunji Oseni. I remember clearly, just before the final, dec uh, I mean, after the declaration, and he says, so you think you've won, you've won what? So brazenly, you know, break the law, do what you feel like. What, what, have you, what do you think you have won? I'm not impressed by someone calling himself a president when I can see through him and know that through, uh, through his history, there is a fake certificate. There was for future, there were many things I don't want to talk about now. I'm not scared about a so-called number two, whom I don't want to talk about people falling, uh, people felled, surprisingly. And those, you know, I can never be intimidated or scared by people who do not play by the rules. Look. The, you're talking about nine years. I would tell you that for, 60, for, for 24 years, the ongoing president was in control of Lagos. We defeated him in Lagos, and you have the results. APC and PDP did not have 60% uh, of the Labour Party votes in FCT that they are ruling. So I, I'm never scared because we are in the, if, if we're in a democracy, it is the people's power that we use. And we're using the people's power, not the ammo tanks of the Nigerian army, which belongs to the Nigerian people, not the barrels of the gun, not the tear gas that the Nigerian people are afraid of. Okay? So um, I, uh, at any day, if there is an election again, Believe you me, the come out will defeat them. It's left for them to go and twist the constitution again, change the meaning of English uh, language, three letter words, and declare by 4 a.m. with all the dynamics that happened before 4 a.m., which, uh, you know, when we say things are unspeakable. 
it was unspeakable why it had to be by 4 a.m. So my people, that is it for you all. I saw this news and I decided to share it with you guys. So please let me know your opinion in the comment section. And please help us to like and share this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you so much for your time and God bless you. Amen.